When Kari, our middle son, our 14-year-old, was born, the newborn screening picked up the sickle beta thal, and we started seeing the hematologist right away. And Kari, for the most part, has been unaffected. He's been fortunate uh, physically as far as um, the illness is concerned. Makaili, our youngest, who's 13, has had the most difficulty with, with the disease. He has had to be hospitalized for painful crisis. It's like somebody taking like a sledgehammer kind of and just kind of hitting you with it for a while and it just feels like it's not going to go away but when it does it's like a big relief but it really really hurts and it, it can be really any it's not like it's always going to be in one place like your back or your leg it could be in your arm it could be in your wrist it could be in your foot really it could be really anywhere. The sickle cell disease is an abnormality of the hemoglobin molecule that carries oxygen. And it makes the cell rigid instead of being nice and pliable. The blood vessels become blocked in the marrow of the bones. And it's very painful, and that's called a painful crisis. Listen to your voice. Johns Hopkins has a worldwide you know, reputation for excellence, and, and that comes from the doctors and nurses, you know, the child health specialists. So it gives us that confidence to know that when our child needs help, um, we're at the right place. That was the 100% reason that we moved to Howard County, was to be closer to Johns Hopkins. Kari will go for an annual checkup. McKaylee, because he's now on uh, this medication called hydroxyurea, uh, he has to be monitored a little bit more closely. The higher your fetal hemoglobin is, the less likely you are to have problems with your sickle cell disease. Very important work, the, a lot of it done at Hopkins was based on that observation that if we could raise fetal hemoglobin levels, we might be able to make the disease better. And that led to the use of a drug called hydroxyurea. <laughs> when we put uh, McKaylee on that drug, his fetal hemoglobin went up, and now he's much more functional, less likely to have painful crises, uh, and things have been going well. They are like all their other friends, playing, active, you know, going to school, not wanting to do their homework sometimes, you know, so it hasn't defined them, but it has certainly, I think, taught them some valuable lessons. I hang out with my friends a lot, yeah, and I try to make sure I get the best grades as I can. I'll play this game like all day if I could. I have an iPod touch, so I like to, I'm usually on that, or in the basement watching TV or playing with my brothers and stuff like that. I've had people say to me, gosh, your kids, they don't look like they have a chronic illness. They, they look very healthy. They're very healthy children. And that, I feel like that's due in large part because of the care that we receive. The goal is not to stay in the hospital for like forever and stuff like that. So like they want you to like be there as long as you need to, but they're also helping you get better so you can go and do the things that you want to do. They're all about getting kids back up and healthy and happy and just back out in life again. Ultimately, we don't want to do these interviews. Ultimately, we want our children cured of sickle cell disease. Uh, and so that's an area which is so important to us, which is another reason why Johns Hopkins Children's Center is so critical because they are the best research institution in the world. Uh, and, and that's where our hope really rest.